some of you are wondering how I got such clean audio when I was up on the roof filming during a really windy day. Here's what the camera was hearing. And here's what the microphone was hearing. People keep asking me what brand of ND filter I use and polarizing filter. Well, it's not really that simple. It actually depends on what type of camera you're using. And this is what it sounds like after I cleaned it up. With light and glass, and it's not just the brand of camera. For example, it sounds a little too clean. So I had to mix back in a little bit of the background sound just to make it sound a little more realistic. The colors are more golden, which is really good for skin tones. Whereas the A7R5, a little too on the cyan blue side. All right, so how did I do this? If you have not seen my audio series, I highly suggest you watch it. I give away lots of information of how they do it in Hollywood with lots of tricks on how to get great audio. But for this video, it all starts with where I place the microphone. And how. I use something called Ursa Circles. They're little soft circles that come in white, black, and skin colored. And then there's also this double stick circle. You peel off the first side of the double stick circle and you stick your little lavalier microphone right in the middle of that. Then you take your soft fabric circle, color of choice, and you stick it over the top of the lavalier microphone. And you secure it really well so it has this soft fabric protecting it. Then peel off the protective layer off the back sticky side, and then you stick that to your chest or wherever it is you want to stick it. And try to place the microphone right below where it, your shirt opens up so there's not a lot of fabric covering it, but just enough fabric to protect you from the wind. Now you're not ready to put the shirt on just yet. If the cord dangles and moves around, you're going to hear loud rustling sounds in the microphone. So you have to secure the cord to your body, preferably with medical tape, and do it in several spots so the cord does not rustle around. Now you can put your shirt on. Now the second step to having good audio and wind is when you're talking to try to have the wind on your back, not on your front, because that way your body is protecting the microphone from the wind. And then when you come back to the studio, you clean up the rest with software. This is not a simple just push one button and it magically all goes away. Sure, there are some apps that claim they can do that. That. But to do it really well, you have to be able to adjust it and fine tune it and get it just to where you want it to be. And one of the videos in my audio series talks about post-processing. And one of the points I make over and over in the audio series is good audio is not simply what microphone do you use or what app do you use to clean it all up. Good audio is lots of things. The recording environment, where you place the microphone, how it's placed there, the combination of microphone and recorder, and the multitude of steps that happen in post-processing. And you can't depend on just one of those things to get good audio. You need all of them. So watch the audio series. I'll put the links down below and learn a lot of wonderful tricks on how to get great audio. Tell your friends about Marcus Picks. I'll see you in the next video.